It's your boy Keyson, the one and only. You're now watching Streets Illest Rated. And I wouldn't be on the show if I wasn't one of the Illest Rated, would I? Would I? Oh. Keyson. So life after reality TV is different. But you know, the, print, the same principles still apply. You still gotta make a living. You still gotta work every day. You still gotta provide. Especially now that I have a newborn baby. And that experience in itself is life changing. So you know, I was there through a whole process in labor. My daughter actually was three months premature. So you know, we were all nervous in the waiting room, like damn. I just hope everything go right. I'm in, the, I'm in the room with my child's mother. I'm just like, all right. Just trying to be as supportive as possible. This is my first time actually really having to put myself to the side and how I felt about the situation and really just make sure she's all right. And, you know, kind of we kind of had a moment where, you know, we, we realized, okay, this is happening. We're having a child. So <laughs> she comes out. She spits out like nothing. Like she jumped out. Couldn't wait to get here. So tiny, man, like a little smaller than a doll baby, than your average size doll baby. Like, you could hold it like this. And it scared me, to be honest. And it, just the fact that she was so small and fragile. And it didn't take her no, no more than 10 seconds to open up her eyes. So she's up looking and crying. And I'm like, whoa. They didn't let me hold her at the time because she was so small. And the way she came out, she wasn't even delivered by a doctor. The nurse, she just came out. She spit her out. And the nurse was like, oh my god. Doctor, doctor. So I was nervous about that. Like, what the hell? Wasn't that supposed to happen? No, actually, a doctor's supposed to be doing the, the, uh, the whatever you call it, ceremony, birth. That's what you call it, anyway. Um, she's out there, and they took her immediately, put her in this little tube, and I'm watching the whole process, and I'm following behind the nurses as they're taking her. I'm like, where y'all taking her? They said to the NICU. That's the, the part of a hospital where you take premature babies. So I'm like, damn. Daughter's premature. Yeah. Like, I hope she make it. Like, Let's go. first thing in my head is, damn, she's tiny. Like, is her breathing gonna be right? All these, I'm worrying about so many things. I'm stressed out at this level. And I follow them all the way to the NICU, and I stay there. I stayed there majority of the night, and the next night, and the next night. So finally, you know, I was able to feed her, and um, you know, talk to her, sing to her, lay her on my chest. I was doing these things every single day, getting dropped off at the hospital. And my child's mother was also in the hospital. She was having some heart problems. So it was stressful because I would go in one room, see my baby who's in there struggling just to stay alive and learning how to breathe and just learning to do everything early. And my child's mother in another room struggling to stay alive. They can't figure out what's wrong with her. They're talking about doing a transfusion. And I'm running back and forth from both rooms just trying to make sure both of them are all right. You know, don't want to lose neither one. So. You know, through this whole time, like, the time I wasn't at the hospital, I spent in the studio with, with my team, just really thinking, like, what right, well now? It's not a game no more. Like, you got a baby in the hospital fighting for her life. You need to be out here fighting for her when she makes it through that. So, you know, I put some thought into something. I said, I need to go ahead and form this company, Black Music Corporation. This is all thoughts while my baby's in the hospital, and I'm going up there every day to see her. So. A friend of mine, Sam King, said, you know, Keyson, I, I fuck with your grind, my nigga. Like, well, let's do it. Let's do the Black Music Corporation. And he said he got the Million Dollar Dreams thing going on. And I knew Sam oh, through the internet, through a girl named Melissa. She was like, yo, I want to plug you with this producer. He's fire. Just, you know, give him a few of your tracks to put on the internet. So this is all the time when my daughter's in the, ho in the hospital. So I was open to anything. I'm like, man, let's just make it happen this year. He's like, all right. So the Black Music Corporation was formed. With me and Sam King incorporated the company and we was, you know, we made the proper steps to get it incorporated at that time. It wasn't a fully finished process, but I felt good about it. I actually laid money down on something that could potentially, you know, take care of me, my daughter, and my whole family. It wasn't much at the time because I didn't have much, but, you know, it was something. And, and he covered the rest. I was like, let's just make it happen. So shout out to Sam King for that, too. And, um, you know, while I'm in the hospital, I'm just thinking, like, all right. What legacy are you gonna leave this kid? She's gonna grow. Like, yeah, she's small now, but I had the faith that she was gonna make it through, but I don't want her knowing me just as, I mean, the thought, honestly, the thought never came to my mind that my daughter would know me for anything less than a great man. It's just intensified when she was physically here. 
So it's like, all right, no excuses. No excuses. I'm making it happen this year. Making it happen. So, you know, I'm feeding her and I'm talking to her, telling her how great she is and, you know, that her name is Promise. I'm telling my daughter this. She can't do nothing. She barely probably can hear me, but I just wanted her to know this. I just wanted to say it out loud. You promise. I made a promise that, you know, I'm gonna give you more than what I had. You know? Her name is Promise More. So put that together. And you see <clears throat> why I chose to name my daughter that. So she's my heart right now. Like I do everything for her. Like, there's days I, I'm just it's days I'm disappointed in myself where I'm like, damn kids, you gotta be productive no matter what it is. I don't care if it's sending a thousand emails. I gotta do that. I can't sleep until I'm in a position for growth to take care of my child. Now, I'm not, I'm not hoping to wake up tomorrow and be a rich man. That's not realistic. I'm hoping to wake up tomorrow a step closer to being a wealthy man, however long that takes. So um, I just want my daughter to be proud of me, and I want everybody else in my family to look at me as a good father. And you can look at me as a troublemaker because of television or a thug because of television or whatever you want. At the end of the day, your opinion stopped mattering the moment my daughter started crying. Real talk, the moment she was alive, your opinion stopped mattering. Hers meant everything. So I just want her to see me the way, you know, a respectful father wants to be viewed. I don't give a damn what the rest of the world sees. So my focus is just to make sure she's proud of me.